Hey guys, thank you for coming to Speech and Te Language Technologies Meetup Group. This is our weekly paper sharing session. Uh, this uh, event is sponsored by Ola Wave Inc. And today I'm trying to share a paper. Um, it's called uh, Hubert or Hubert. <laughs> I guess it should be Hubert. Um, Self supervised speech representation learning by masked prediction of hidden units by sorry I think he's a Chinese guy but uh, it's by Weining Xu and his colleagues I think these guys are from Facebook and they also share the code uh, in the PyTorch PyTorch fair sequence branch. Okay. Okay, bye. I think this paper is uh, not very new because it published almost a half a year ago, but because lately there are many papers that are uh, mentioning this paper. So I decided uh, that we should uh, give this paper a review. I think the paper uh, did a very good job in the introduction, but I'm, today I'm going to try to, uh, I, I will skip that um, and talk about what they, they do. Uh, first, um, I think they mentioned that for a pre-training model or the Hubert model, it needs to model and mask input into meaningful continuous latent representations. Well, um, I think the second sentence uh, is uh, confusing to me. Um, they're doing end-to-end, -end, um, but they're talking about acoustic modeling again. Acoustic modeling is not end-to-end. -end. Um, but it does make sense to me, um, especially the word meaningful. I like it. Um, I would more say a word meaningful or effective, you know, because you can have m many different types of uh, continuous latent representation. Uh, and you can see people compared with different pre-training methods every day. What they are comparing is that when feeding these different latent representation coming from different proposed model uh, into a subsequent speech decoder or speech trainer, uh, which one can get a lower word error rate. Okay, so definitely uh, certain representation are better than the others. Um, but how do you define it? This is good, okay? Or the, the, the word mentioned by the author, meaningful. And the second thing is that um, the purpose of the model, especially the model for the ASR purpose, for the speech recognition purpose, it needs to capture the long range temporal relation, relations between the learned representations. I think this is crucial too, uh, because as all, we all know that uh, speech uh, or streamed speech or our daily conversations, they're not isolated words. You know, it's 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 a flow, it's a stream, and uh, you can see that when I say I'm gonna have some, well, it, it most like next word is a a food name like pizza burger right so this has a temporal relation uh, between or among the history on the current and definitely uh, the history and the the future might be related too because uh, um, you can definitely sometimes once you look at the the final words for example um, you can see, um, you can say, uh, something 
hit a train. So you can see the something is a history. So it's related to the future or the 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 the, the, the next stuff. Okay. So you can see the something could be car, right? Uh, or a cow, uh, things like this. So they are all, uh, so this temporal relations, you know, uh, has to be modeled in this learning representation too, okay? So what these people do in the Hubert, okay? I think Hubert uh, was proposed after the Wave 2. Point, wave 2 back 2.0. And uh, these also try to come up with a more you know, straightforward way, in my understanding, or more simplified way uh, to, to get a, um, a, a representation or portrait model. And you can see uh, the figure one. So once you get speech draw signals or FFT, coefficients or feeder banks signals. You pass through that through CN and uh, you can do the masking on the CN output and then you fed it that into a transformer. Okay. Then you ask away, okay, what are those Z's? I understand this is uh, like bird training, right? Or the, the, the learning in a transformer. Uh, but what are the Z's? For the NLP, it's very easy to understand, right? Those Z's should be the word pieces or the, the tokens, word tokens, okay? But in the speech or uh, speech spoken language processing, uh, speech processing, speech does not have token. What do I mean? You may say, wait, um, speech do have tokens, like phones, right? Words, those are tokens. But the thing is, it does not have a uh, clear, uh, defined uh, tokens like NLP uh, during pre-training. Pre-training, in pre-training, you don't have any labels. To have those phones or words you're talking about for speech, you got to have to have somebody to label that. Once you label the speech, they are not pre-training anymore. So you, you may ask, oh, wait, what, what, what I, uh, what, mm, Am I supposed to do? Uh, because speech, uh, like you mentioned, it can. It seems like it couldn't be tokenized. It doesn't have token. Uh, but definitely, you can define uh, the tokens or the units by yourself through the author's proposed acoustic unit discover system. You can discover. It can discover those units automatically. Um, Right, um, and that they also use the most simple, simplified way, k-means. Everybody knows k-means. K-means works for their system. Okay, um, and the concept is that okay, you can have this forward loop, and this k-mean summarization loop. So once you get the k-means. Uh, or the code books. I, I, I like to use a code book because you know at my age, people everybody talk about code books. Once you got the, those code books, so you have those codes, right? And for each frame, each frame of uh, the the speech feature, you're gonna assign a code book ID to it, and this is uh, Z3, Z4, Z5 mean, okay, or um, and indeed, uh, during their training, they actually, I think, they're using yes, they're using IDs. They're not using the the value, because you can see here they're using the ID, which is a categorical variable. Okay, and the, um, then the prediction got to be very simple. Uh, simple. You, they use the the the, the C E loss, right? You see, you see here. So the input X, the input feature. I'm sorry. You can see here. So the input feature X is masked, and the Z T is 
the speech unit ID you want to predict. Okay, very very easy to understand. And uh, they they also say okay, uh, maybe I shouldn't mask the signal. So they're they're proposing this type of weighted uh, loss, right? The, this side is a mask loss. This is a unmasked masked loss. Um, but I think in the end, uh, uh, I saw their their results, um, and they use alpha equals to one, which gets the best result. So it, it means that it always should be use the using the masking loss. Okay, mask the loss. Uh, then, um, so I guess I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, uh, Gaussian mixture model, um, and the Gaussian mixture model uh, works better. It's a generative model. It works better than the uh, single Gaussian model in terms of uh, modeling the variables distribution. And the, the, the authors are doing the similar things here. Uh, what they did is that <clears throat> given one uh, input, input, um, input signal or input feature, they're saying uh, it can have multiple masks uh, with different probabilities. But I, I, I guess um, but the interesting thing is, according to your equation, correct me if I were wrong, uh, they didn't assign the probability of that feature that belongs to a certain cluster. They are using equal weight. Yeah. So, so this is called a cluster ensemble, or they're using, uh, <clears throat> given one feature, they're using multiple labels, okay, multiple uh, it can have multiple speech unit IDs, so they can also calculate this in a, a cross entropy uh, style. Okay, and they talk about the product uh, product quantization. I think this is uh, trivial to me. You can definitely model this in the subspace, not big deal. Um, definitely gonna help for sure. Um, and also, they're saying that uh, for the um, for the learned. Uh, clusters or not the learn for the for the cluster centroids or clusters it could be refined how do they do it um, because if you look at this equation uh, that the figure so at the very beginning you use the raw speech signal or speech features MFCC feature whatever uh, as the input but after you finish the first round or first iteration, okay, you got those Z's, right? I guess it's, it's not Z, it, I, I mean the representation, the output from the transformer or certain layer output of the transformer, okay? So you can use that output as the new input, okay? So for those new input, you can cluster uh, on top of these new inputs, which could be transformers output, right? You can see you're gonna get new clusters, a new centroids of these clusters. You can rerun your uh, cost entropy loss minimization procedure. Okay, this you can keep doing these things, right? And until you see, okay, the loss, I I'm fine with the loss. Okay, the loss is. It is small enough. I'm gonna stop something like this. So you can see this whole procedure. I would say compared to wave to vac, um, uh, especially the contrastive loss proposed in the wave to vac, it's it's much concise or straightforward um, and easy to understand. Because uh, I, I guess uh, some of you may have difficulty in understanding the contrastive loss which it was proposed in the wave to back but this one gives you a, a more uh, straightforward way of uh, learning a pre-trained model compared to wave to back i think 
Okay, um, I think this is tricky. I'm gonna skip that. Uh, yeah, they, they once they get the prediction model, uh, they, they can train the uh, um, ASR using the CTC loss. Um, not a big deal. Um, for yeah, and the, it's interesting to me that okay, uh, they use about uh, five hundred or one thousand clusters. Um, but but I'm just curious. Um, would the having more cluster make sense? Um, because you you do have sixty uh, k hours and supervise the speech. Um, and in the latest Google paper, they have almost a million hours of um, uh, and supervise the speech. Um, should should we or should should you um, increase the amount of uh, clusters? Okay. Um, um, I have to say I'm not a personal fan of um, using only 10 hours of or 100 hours of libre speech for uh, for comparing different uh, methods because I think a, a thousand hours of training set of libre speech is already very small. I don't want to go any smaller. Um, so uh, let's see your results on the full size the libre speech. Any questions? Okay. The first line, conformer L. Uh, this is the number they copy from this paper. It's a supervised start from scratch. No, I'm no. Uh, pre-trained model. Um, I get very good results on test clean. Um, the conformer paper, right? One point nine. Um, I and they they use the self-training. So what does self-training mean? Okay, let's see here. So the they would first train a ASR on labeled data, and use that ASR to annotate the unlabeled data. You may ask, wait, where's the unlabeled data? So in this uh, experiment, they use the Libri light. You see, this is LL means Libri light. I think they might have a typo LV. Okay, it's not it's not back. Okay, um, so they're gonna run the, for example, the conformer model on the Libri light. 60 hour 60k hours of speech then get those labels and you can call those labels as pseudo labels okay then the use of pseudo labels as the transcription of the unsupervised uh, set libre light and and run another rounds of speech uh, training okay and then you can see okay this is getting better right noisy student training which is self training 1.7 and then pre-training pre-training is easy to understand okay all it did was uh, first you get a pre-trained model and then with the pre-trained model so pre-trained model is trained on the 60k hours of unlabeled speech okay and then the next step is that you hook up your uh, 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 your speech ASR model, uh, laid it on top of the pre model, and then you use a supervised training objective to fine tune on the library speech data, which is 960k hours. Uh, but definitely, you fine tune the the ASR model and the pre model uh, in different learning rates or optimization schedule because uh, you only need to tweak your pre-trained model a little bit, but you do have to change the ASR model parameters a lot. Okay. So the pre-training model. Um, I think the result is very good. You can further reduce the uh, the, the results. You can see the conformer versus the pre-trained conformer. Okay. It goes from 1.9 to 1.5. Yeah, 1.8 and 1.9, these two, 
they're not comparable because they're using different uh, model architectures. Um, and then you can combine the pre-training and the self-training. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this, you can definitely check the paper Big SSL. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of this paper, to be frank, speaking. Check, check the Big SSL paper. Um, you can see that uh, uh, it further reduced the um, the the WR from 1.5 to 1.4, and then it's time to mention their work, Hubert. Okay, for the the best of Hubert, the the extra large model, they keep they're capable of getting 1.8. But I, but I but I think that um, the results com um, is not fully comparable with the the, the result talked talked about. Uh, the thing is, first of all, it doesn't have self training, and this is my own thought. You know, um, well, it seems that the, the Hubert does not need or. It couldn't benefit from the self training. Why? Because I think that, um, because you can see that uh, in the self training, especially when you do the pre training plus self training, the procedure is that you first pre train and the fine tuning model. What this means. Once you fine tune the model, you can see the wave to back. You can definitely try to update the the pre trained model. Um, but I didn't see the authors uh, did any uh, uh, pre training plus self training, and even only self training experiments. Um, because I think I saw some papers from Google and Microsoft. Uh, self training definitely would help the WER reduction uh, because you can always, you know, uh, suppose your WER is already very low, means recognition accuracy is very good. Uh, you can always try to annotate the unlabeled speech and get those uh, the results, that the, the good results, uh, and then use that. As a training data, aka self training, to further boost your speech recognition accuracy. Um, I, I was thinking that what blocks you from uh, blocks them from doing this. Um, but but my guess is that here's 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 my guess. Because once you see that uh, the self-training um, or the pre-training with the fine-tuning, especially the pre-training with fine-tuning in the the models that use a wave to vac, wave to vac. Um, I don't have the probably you can see this paper. This is a wave to vac uh, BERT. Um, we can see the contrastive loss defined in a wave to back. Uh, the the error can be backpropped not only in the pre trained model, but also it can be backpropped into the, the quantization module, which means the quantization module could be easily be updated in this you know automatic or backprop back propagation scheme. You know, it get update gets updated, and uh, once once the quantization gets updated, then your pre-trained model would be get updated too. Because um, I think uh, uh, lots of the self-training model they they still having this uh, contrastive loss evolved. Okay, they're still trying to update the pre-trained model. Um, but for the Hubert, I I didn't see. A way of updating the k-mean center 
through back propagation because you know k means is k means you know it's uh it's clustered in an autonomous style i think um the the only the only chance that the k means results would change uh is either you change the initial start of the k means or you switch the feature space okay like the people did in in the uh in the in in in, in this work um it used the transformers output or transformers uh, middle layers output as the new input to run the clustering on the k means um but but definitely i think if you do want to do it if you do want to do the self training and so once definitely the back prop you know you can update your transformers parameters which is in your pre-trained model for sure right you can update it um and you you do can once the transformers model get updated your latent representation would be changing right that you can for sure update your k means for sure in the in the fine tuning or in the self training but i think this will make the learning sophisticated a little bit sophisticated um so i have to think about this uh, for, so sorry i i will stop here um but i do wish if the author um if somebody can tell me the reason why this author uh, didn't try the self-training on top of the pre-training. Okay. Um, and I do think uh, the, the, the results in the red circle are comparable um, because they both use the transformer language model. They all use the, the pre-training pre model and they all didn't use the self-training Mm, and that they didn't use a conformer model, right? Conformer gave you better results. Um, I would say uh, looking at those results, Wave Tubac and Hubert are roughly the same or similar uh, in terms of uh, WER. But because um, people have, I saw not only just one paper. Uh, using wave to vac with pre-training and the self-training, which can get better results. So I, from now, or at least for now, I'm a personal a fan of wave to vac versus the Hubert. Okay. Um, uh, and I think this also did some um, interesting studies or analysis on why this thing works. Um, they, I think they propose something called the uh, PNMI, the phone normalized mutual information, which is to uh, first you have to see the the phone purity. Um, I think that the whole concept is that um, they come up with the, for for instance, five hundreds of. Uh, speech units or 500 clusters they want to see for each cluster are those samples cluster in this cluster coming from the same phone as we know all know that english might have or has 39 or 61 roughly like 50 phones okay 50 ish from 30 to 60. so are my are each of my is each of my 500 cluster uh, consists of just a one consists of the samples from just one phone so this is the results showing this uh just i took a quick a rough look at it it seems the purity is not that good you see um the purity is seldomly exceed 0.8 okay which either means they're not doing a good job or linguisticians are not doing doing a good job. <laughs> um, but definitely they're saying that, okay, the PN, 
PNMI score, the, the cluster results, you know, the purity is much higher when cluster on Hubert features than cluster on the MFCC feature. Well, this probably suggests that, okay, because my speech units uh, have a better cluster quality, uh, so my feature or the Pritchard model is better than MFCC feature, which was widely used 10 years ago, okay? People are still using MFCC now, but 10 years ago, MFCC is the state of art. Okay, um, yes, they, they mentioned that, okay, I think, uh, yeah, the they, they, they tried the alpha, I think this is trivial, you can read it by yourself. And they tried the, the cluster example compared to those things. Okay, I guess I will stop here. Um, so this is the paper uh, uh, Hubert. I'm sorry, I only read the paper for almost uh, less than an hour. So I, my understanding of this paper might be limited or not accurate. Uh, so feel free to leave your comments and I will try to um, benefit from your suggestions, comments, or even critics. All right, questions? So no questions, I will stop the recording.